Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Today we are going to be walking through drum synths. So this feature was added in Logic 10.5 very recently, and it's going to allow us to design our own drum samples very quickly and easy. It's extremely powerful. There's a lot of options. You're going to be able to very quickly and easily get a unique sound without having to kind of dive through samples on the internet. So let's get started here. I've just got an empty Logic Pro 10 session. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with a software instrument. And I'll also go over a little bit of drum kit designer. Our focus here is going to be on drum synth, but I'll also show how we can use these two to work together. Um, so let's start by going in here and we have drum synth. Let's create a stereo drum synth. So I've got my little musical typing up. Um, you can get this by using command K. And let's go ahead and the default we get here is a kick drum. Let's go ahead and turn this down a little bit. Um, just hitting A on my keyboard with my musical typing up. And let's go ahead and open up drum synth and start to take a look at our options. So the first thing I want to go over is we have four menus here. We've got kicks. Uh, snares and claps, percussion, which is sort of miscellaneous drum sounds, and then hats and cymbals. So within each category, we've also got several templates to choose from. So each of these have slightly different parameters as well, which allows us to get a very wide range of sounds. So let's start by just going through a heavy kick and walking through some of these parameters. So this is our default. The first parameter, and this is on all of them, is pitch. Now, these are automatically um, pitched in tune. So for example, I'm playing this kick on C. If I go up to um, my D, you can see the pitch of the kick is following the pitch on the keyboard. Now, this is very helpful. Um, uh, an underrated trick is pitching your drums to the key of your track. It's going to add, um, make, really make sure that all of your harmonies are kind of working together throughout the track. It really adds cohesion. So that's a nice feature that is included. However, if we wanted to kind of manually increase like an octave up, we do have that option. We can also use this pitch parameter to automate the pitch. So let's say we have a buildup of a bunch of snares in an EDM track. What you can do is automate this pitch parameter to have that go up and kind of build tension. So that's a neat way to use the pitch parameter. Our tone is going to do the following. So our tone knob is changing a bit of the harmonics that are getting into here. It's adding a little bit of a different timbre to the kick. Saturation is going to help with um, how well the kick can be heard in the mid-range by adding some uh, mid and upper mid-range harmonics. So this is going to really help make sure that your kick is heard on smaller speakers such as headphones or an iPhone speaker. Saturation is basically a form of distortion. Our shape is affecting the envelope of our sound. Remember, this is a synthesizer, so we can affect um, the shape of the envelope of our sound. I prefer a pretty fast attack and decay. Um, we also have manual control over the decay, so we can control how long this rings out. So we can also get a sort of 808 um, kind of ring out if we're making something like a trap song. Where we get to ring out that bass kind of sub frequency. We can also turn that down for just a very clean kick. Our sweep is going to be kind of that air um, in the upper frequencies above like five, six, seven kilohertz. Let's turn up the decay so we can hear that. You can hear it's almost like a filter sweep. That's why it's called sweep. Um, 
Let's go to an air kick again. So this one, we've got uh, a noise in there. That's going to be the air. We've got punch. Which is sort of a lower end distortion. Again, we can automate the pitch. Uh, snap is sort of like often you layer um, kick effects so that you have kind of a, a low sub kick, like a middle kick, and then an upper kind of click kick. And that's gonna help your kick kind of punch through in multiple frequency bands, which helps it cut through the mix. So here we can kind of control that with punch and snap. adding kind of a snare in here with this this uh, white noise Let's see if we turn the decay up no it stays pretty tight okay um, yeah so that's about it for kicks you can get a lot of cool sounds out of there you can really get a lot of precision um, snares and claps um, here we've got uh, both snares and claps so you get to kind of pick and choose so let's start with our snappy snare again it's pitched Can kind of move around our snare sound, um, kind of how clappy we want it versus how sort of uh, synthesized sounding we want it. We can increase the kind of width in that kind of six kilohertz range. We can add some, I you know, it's called dirt, so I like to imagine you're throwing dirt on top of the snare drum, and it's kind of Every time you hit it, the dirt kind of, you know, it adds a little bit of sound, right? It's kind of vibrating on top. Our decay, the same as with the kick, is going to increase how long the sample lasts. Uh, let's do an electronic snare. You can get some pretty cool sounds with that as well. And then we've also got claps. Let's go to human clap. Now this default doesn't sound great, so let's play with it a little bit. I don't like this clap very much. Let's try a mechanical clap. Um, you know, I'm not really loving these clap sounds too much. You might layer them on top of a snare for a little bit of a combined tone. Um, maybe we'll play a little bit with this a little bit later, put some reverb on it. We can probably get it sounding decent. So percussion, this is going to be uh, kind of your other miscellaneous instruments. We've got a tom. So you can play with your toms a little bit. Um, we've got this metal machine. This is going to be all your kind of clicky stuff. Uh, option click to bring back to zero. get all sorts of kind of glitchy electronic stuff out of that one a little kind of fun to play with got a cowbell you can add some kind of chords and heart you can add a little bit of kind of polytone chordal chord stuff in there some kind of bass stuff in here another tom sound oh yeah we got a shaker 
love this. This is, uh, you know, I played with it a little bit before this video to kind of get to know it, but this is also me kind of exploring through the sounds as well. So I'm having a little bit of fun. And finally, we've got hats and cymbals. So these are very electronic sounding, definitely sound synthesized. You can get a lot more uh, realistic cymbals out of um, our, our normal drum kit designer and uh, you know the other built-in Logic acoustic drums. Definitely very synthesized sounding. Let's talk about hi-hats. So again, you're making a trap song. You gotta have a nice, you gotta have some nice fat hi-hats. Let's go ahead and add a new um, drum machine designer. And I don't know if this is a, a bug for me. It's not showing up in my instrument pane yet. So let's just go with an empty channel strip. And then if we go to instrument, it pops up for me. Um, it's, it's off screen from here, but um, it's down here for me. So I get drum machine designer, not to be confused with drum kit designer, which is gonna be your acoustic drums. And here we've got, I'm gonna close our keyboard for now. All of these notes. So these are going to apply to our notes on the keyboard. So if we play um, D2, it would play whatever's in our D2 sound. So what we can do, let's hit um, close this, hit X to bring up our mix window, click plus. That's going to create a new instrument track for us. So we can drop down, we can see the instrument we just added here. So inst three, that applies to our D2 on the keyboard. And we can actually take the drum synth that we put up here and put that on our instrument three. So now we've got this hi-hat from before. So now if I open up my musical typing while I've got my kit selected, so now if we open up our musical typing and hit D2, we can hear our hi-hat. Um, let's go ahead and on instrument one, bring in a new drum synth instance and put a kick on there. So remember how all of our drum synths are automatically pitched for us when we're in this track. All of our keys are going to play the sample. However, when we're in the kit, only the instrument that is assigned is going to play it. So in this case, our uh, C1, let's actually bring that up to C2 so that it's in the same world. If we go up, it's not gonna play the kick. It's going to play our hi-hats. This lets us kind of program uh, beat pads or uh, keyboard, things like that. But then we can also always go in and get that pitched sound as well. Let's go ahead and put a snare on here as well and we'll have a little bit of a kit going. So let's change this input to E2. Add a new track there. We'll just bring this guy up here. On instrument four, we're gonna put a new drum synth. Let's grab a snare. That default one sounds great. And there you have it. You got a little kit you can play with. And that is drum synth. Really going to use this a lot for um, your trap producers, your EDM producers for designing your own percussion instruments. I'm also probably going to use it a lot in mixing. Um, a lot of times you get not the best uh, percussion samples in a mix. So this gives me a lot of power to be able to mix in additional samples and get really give me more control over the sound. For example, um, I was mixing a song a few weeks ago where the artist was like, can you play with the snare sound a little, a little bit? I'm not really loving it. And before, you know, I have this, uh, let me see if I can find it. I have a, and in here I'd have something like a snare sampler instrument where everything is a different snare. And so I would have that saved in ESX, which is now sampler. And I would just kind of find one that fit. 
tweak it a little bit with uh, EQ and things like that, and that would be the sound that I'd be mixing in. Now I have a lot more control with drum synth to be able to create new samples to um, squeeze into a mix to affect the sound of individual drums. Super useful, uh, very excited to continue to play with it and learn more. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. Be sure to like the video, leave any questions, comments, suggestions for additional things to play with using the drum synth in the comments down below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more Logic Pro 10 tutorials and music production tutorials. And uh, also, I just released two songs on Spotify, Apple Music, all platforms. Uh, they're two indie rock songs, so I'll leave a link down below to go uh, give those a listen. Uh, thank you so much for watching, as always, and I'll see you next time.